I'm Jeff Cornwall and this is The Entrepreneurial Mind. Today my guest is Mark Harris with Next GXDX. We'll be back to talk with Mark after this. Tocopolis programming is sponsored in part by The Vein Center, now celebrating 10 years service in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, Mark, it's been a while since we've been together. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember right, you and I met when, when you were kind of hanging around the EC and, and just getting your business started. That's right. Um, and uh, talk a little bit about sort of that initial concept of what you thought you were going to be tackling with. Uh, and was it called Next GXDX at that point? That's correct. All right. Yeah, yeah. So the, the original concept was really focused out of a need I saw when I was working in the genetics industry. And that was a real lack of transparency around these tests and a really explosive market that was highly inefficient. So, so which, the, what, what kind of initial, tests in particular are we talking about? Uh, so these are, are pretty rare genetic tests. So you're looking at uh, uh, difficult to diagnose epilepsies, intellectual disabilities, um, some hereditary cancer types. So these are, are and, very specific uh, disease-related yeah. kinds of genetic tests. That's correct, that's correct. And, and so your value proposition was gonna be to do what? to create an IT company that would basically become an Amazon.com for genetic testing. So it was going to help connect buyers and sellers in this market. Because it's an inefficient market because mm -hmm. the docs are spread around and the labs are spread around and they have a hard time connecting with each other. Correct. And, is it, and, and was your perception or that there was enough critical mass to make that work? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I, the, you know, the model... Because there's not in a single city, but by spreading it out mm -hmm. nationally. And it was seeing an enormous growth rate, so 25, 26% CAGR. And so we knew by getting in early as well that that it was a market that would continue to expand. Interesting. And All right, so, so you came in with that model, and, mm -hmm. and what did you learn? Does anything, anything early on had to change? Any surprises, mm -hmm. or, or did you hit Always. it spot on? <laughs> Never hit it spot on. <laughs> Oh, so one of the early models was really engaging the laboratories sort of one by one and as we got laboratories that, on board. That's what I remember and I was yep. worried about the sales force that you'd have to have to make that work. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I do remember that now. Yeah, and that was, you know, that model of having to, to bring that first lab or two onto a system that really didn't exist and, and just showcase the tests of labs that we brought on the system. Uh, became really unsustainable because you couldn't get to critical mass. Right. And so the first real pivot we had was when we realized we needed to first become a resource for the clinicians and showcase tests for all laboratories. That's a huge pivot. And then, yes. And that, then, was that hard for you guys to get your head around? or It, it was. I mean, it was a difficult piece because you, all of a sudden you, we're going to build out a tremendous database. You were, I mean, you and, had discovered what you thought was the niche while you were working mm -hmm. in the industry and you were forging full speed ahead the last time I saw you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then this hit you side of the head like a two by four. And mm -hmm. talk about that process. How did you, how did you wrestle with that data mm -hmm. that says your business model's not quite right, and, mm -hmm. and, and you well, got to make an just, adjustment. It was getting feedback. So, I mean, we spent a lot of time um, initially with my first few hires, uh, calling up, cold calling laboratories, talking them through the platform, trying to get groups on And they're on coming board to you early. saying, dude, this isn't working good. Is that? Well, well, it was really saying, okay, well, how many docs do you have on the system? And how many transactions are you processing? And all these pieces that And they were small. We had, yes, really. Yeah, we had not been able to get to that critical mass that made them want to join the system. So, because you have a chicken and egg problem with right. this model. Right. And so we realized by creating a resource that would drive physician adoption, you could get over that hump and then interest the laboratories uh, in the transactional model, which was so, the core of our business. So the model completely changed and now you're marketing to docs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and and uh, how, how did you kind mm -hmm. of adjust your staffing and your 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 systems to make that work. Well, we were still small at the time, so the 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 overall business model and the the way we we're trying to provide values to each group didn't really change, but it was sort of 
which was first, the chicken or the egg. So we're going to talk to these guys instead of these guys. Exactly, gotcha. exactly. So that piece, um, you know, we, we spent a good year and a half building up the, the database and putting in, in place the systems that would allow us to scale it efficiently. So that took you know, a little more capital and time than we'd originally anticipated, but it enabled us to actually build a core asset that is now really the core of the business. Did it take a long time for you to get enough data to feel comfortable scaling up like that, to be able to do that? I mean, what did, it, did it come very quickly that, it, oh, this is the right pivot for us to do? We need well, to focus I mean, on it docs. was a tough, building out that database was an extremely difficult process, and it started out being manual, and then we built but technology tools. But knowing that there. you should do it, is that, was, that the hard, was that a hard process? That was a bit of a leap, okay. but we, you know, that's where you have a good team, and you all work together collaboratively, and you know, that helps you feel like, yes, this is the right decision. It's just not me, you know, waking up uh, randomly changing direction, but it's right. getting the feedback from the group and we all bought into it. We believed it would work and we went, never turned back from there. So, so let's fast forward a little bit and kind mm -hmm. of what is, what does a company look like today? What do you, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you structure? So, how you, what are you working on? So the model has continued to evolve. Uh, we initially were going after very niche groups of physicians. Uh, that were, you know, genetics experts, pediatric neurologists, very kind of rare groups of physicians. But one of the things that we realized pretty quickly was that uh, as we positioned ourselves in the market, the, the, the coding, CPT codes, that the way, uh, you know, healthcare is billed, changed in the genetics industry in early 2013. And what happened then is hospitals went from making money off these tests to losing money off these tests. And what everyone was scrambling and for was... Was that an affordable care outcome, or is this still no, pre-affordable care? Okay. it was separate. Okay. Yeah. And, and so everyone, all these hospitals started scrambling now for ways to reduce uh, their losses. And they wanted a utilization management tool, but nothing existed. And we were in a beautiful position to leverage our database to provide that. And so we started... So you have a new customer group you hadn't even planned on. Yes, yes, exactly. And so we ended up launching a new product called Gene Connect for hospital clients. And what's Which is great, just repackaging what you've already developed? It's, and it includes additional tools uh, that we hadn't originally planned to offer, but we listened to the customers and, and right. built them out. And what's great about that product as well is when you continue to look at you know, the chicken and the egg uh, issue, you bring on board a hospital, you're bringing a lot of you know, eggs or chickens right. Right. <laughs> at once because you're kind of bring in all the volume and, uh, and the clinicians associated with that institution. Did, did, you, did you ever choke on that volume when you first started bringing the big volume or no, the no, systems we were, prepared. were robust enough? Yeah, we were prepared and it was scalable. And, and so, so where do you see this going? Is that something you can share? Do you, is hmm. this in terms of expansion? and? I mean, we're, right now we're really focusing on our hospital clients. That is a, a core need. And by building tools for the hospitals, that includes you know tools for the doctors as well so we continue to be a free resource so that vision has never really changed we didn't shut down right. the doctor's portal and just build a hospital one we have both um, now and we're continuing to build out additional services for the laboratories as well because we want to create a transparent and efficient marketplace which means providing value to both sides right. and so that's uh, we work very hard to make sure we have a balanced approach uh, and on our service offerings. Will there be an, an impact from affordable care? Is that going to change things? I, I don't see a direct impact in that. Um, this is still a, a very complicated market. Um, I don't I don't see anything that's going to change that uh, with the Affordable Care Act. So Very cool. So mm -hmm. just keep growing and keep finding more <laughs> hospitals, labs, and docs in Egypt at this point. That's the plan. Very cool. <laughs> well, it's good to catch up and good to see you again. Excellent. Thanks good for coming in, Mark. Thank you.